the Vegan Woman community members. As you know, we've been really excited about this opportunity to interview Dr. Neil Bernard. Dr. Bernard has been such a great ray of light, not just for people, but for the animals as well. And I'm really honored to have him with us today. Dr. Bernard has founded the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, has been doing amazing work as an individual and as the president of the organization he founded. So thank you so much for being with us. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for letting me speak with you today. Great. And the first question I wanted to ask you about is in regards to the connection between the pharmaceutical industries and the medical world today. And many people feel that it's simply not profitable for the pharmaceutical industries to have people on a healthy vegan diet. Um, what I wanted to know is, with the pharmaceutical industry having such a strong influence on the medical world, and people not getting the right information from their doctors on how to cure their problems rather than just manage their illness, uh, what are your thoughts on how we could get over this obstacle and have a vegan diets that are not profitable as part of our lives. <laughs> well, you know, it really is true that up until now when you go see the doctor, the doctor might be treating diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, turning to prescriptions first and not really thinking so much about diet. But even though you can understand why they might do that, they might imagine that patient isn't willing to make other changes, to tell you the truth, I think the world is changing. And a lot of patients don't want the expensive medicines, they don't want the side effects of medicines, and what they do want is to really feel good about their bodies. So when a person makes a diet change, it might have side effects, but all the side effects are good ones. Um, you lose weight and you feel better. So I, I am now seeing more and more doctors and more and more patients saying, let's not turn to medicines right away. There is a role for medicines, but let's not turn there first. Let's, let's start with a healthy diet first. And what are your thoughts about the connection, if I may ask about uh, ethical veganism and a plant-based diet? Uh, do you feel that many people are much more open once they already follow a plant-based diet to also learn about what goes on in the animal industries? You know, when I'm talking to really young people, like I'm talking to a 16-year-old teenager, he, so, so far as he's aware, he doesn't have a prostate. He's not too worried about that. He's not thinking about having a heart attack. But on the other hand, a lot of young people are concerned about animals, and they might become vegetarian or vegan because of their concerns about, about the ethics of using animals. And obviously, the animal industries are cruel. I grew up with this, and many, many people have seen things that are, are really quite disturbing. Americans now eat more than a million animals every hour. So, the animal side of things can be a big motivator, but I find that when I'm talking to people who might be a little bit older, very often they're concerned about their health. Mm -hmm. And a health motivation reaches a lot of people. But once they've made a change because of their health, sometimes that opens their thinking a little bit to what the animals have gone through, or how the diet might affect the earth. So I think one complements the other. Mm -hmm. And I know that your background is very much a, a non-vegan background, to say the least. Yeah, that, that's right. Every, every generation of Barnards, as far back as I can trace, raised cattle. Uh -huh. So um, we've, we've, we've uh, got a ways to go to clean that up. And how did you, go, how did you decide to turn into the vegan diet then? The, the year before I went to medical school, I had a job helping out at autopsies in a hospital. Whenever people would die in the hospital, I would help examine the body not a very cheerful thing but one day we had a person who died in the hospital of a massive heart attack and so the pathologist had me helping him and he pulled a big section of ribs off the chest and put it on the table and that exposed the heart which was filled with atherosclerosis the hardening of the arteries and he showed me this not just in the arteries to the heart but all over the body at the end of the examination he put the ribs back in the chest and, and then I sewed up the skin and cleaned up and when I went up to the cafeteria, they were serving ribs for lunch. And I have to tell you, um, it made me think that meat is sort of a dead body, and I, I have to say I couldn't eat it. Um, anyway, that was, that was the first of many things. But um, you, can't, you can't forget something like that. And as time went on, I, I became more and more aware of the health concerns and also the issues about animals and the environment. 
Um, as you can probably guess from the name, The Vegan Woman, most of our audience uh, is made up of women. And I was wondering if maybe you could uh, specify three main benefits that you see the vegan diet, the plant-based diet, having for women, and why women should be happy that they chose this. Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Um, the first one, might, I might say, relates to hormones. Mm -hmm. One day I was sitting at my desk and my phone rang. And it was a young woman whose mother was a doctor that I knew in another part of the country. And this young woman said, I can't get out of bed. One day every month, my menstrual cramps are just so disabling. The only way I get through the day is with fistfuls of painkillers. And she said, I can't keep doing this. And as she was describing this, I started thinking, we know that food choices affect hormones, specifically the estrogen levels in a woman's blood, because cancer researchers have been concerned about that because of breast cancer. And so I thought, well, maybe it's not just breast cancer, maybe even everyday things like hormonal changes uh, related to cramps could be affected by diet. So I suggested to her, no animal products at all out of your diet and keep oils really low and have as natural a diet as you can and, and see how you do for the next month. And I also gave her a few painkillers to get her for the first couple of days. <laughs> anyway, so she took painkillers for a couple of days and she was okay. She did a completely vegan diet. At the end of the next month, she called me back so excited. She said she had had no pain, nothing. And so I did a research study which tested this diet. It works fabulously. And in fact, one of the women in the research studies was infertile. She couldn't have a child. The very first month that she did a vegan diet, she said, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> she was pregnant. That's amazing. And uh, I saw her several years later. She introduced me to her three vegan kids. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so it gets hormones in better balance. That's number one. Um, number two is energy. A lot of people, they're, they're running low on energy. And when you get the fat out of the diet, your blood can circulate again. And number three, many people are beating themselves up with diets. This kind of diet, that kind of diet, the other kind of diet. When you're putting healthy foods in your body, you can start to forget about those fad diets mm -hmm. and you can feel better about yourself. That's great. Thank you for that. Lastly, I wanted to ask you, um, is there one vegan woman that you could highlight as uh, for her inspirational work in promoting veganism and who would that person be and why? What a terrific question. You know, th I have to say, there are a lot of people changing their diets and are being great role models. But one who stands out for me right now is Serena Williams, mm. you know, the, the tennis champion. And I love her for a couple reasons. One is that she follows a vegan diet and she is, um, she's not only very graceful, but she is strong <laughs> and can be a great endurance. But the other thing is why she did it. She did it for her sister because her sister had some autoimmune uh, symptoms and wasn't doing very well and she supported her. And so they both made this diet change and like so many other athletes, they get this tremendous benefit. So I'm going to tip my hat to Serena. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Bernard, for well, doing this with us. And thank you, everybody, for watching. And have a great day. I hope to see you again soon.